Hello, hello. Good morning, online church. Or good afternoon or good night, depending yeah, on where you're from. You are. If you're from England, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Mother's Day in England and maybe some other countries, if it's in your country, let us know. Uh, but we're so glad that you are joining us this morning. Um, we are excited for what the Lord is going to do. And we've had an amazing week, actually. We had a, a leadership retreat this week and yep. just took some time to vulnerably share our hearts with one another. And we have so much hope even for where we're going as a church and a team, after spending a few days together and being real and the, the unity that came in our, our team was just beautiful. Yeah, I've never been so hopeful, maybe ever in my life, for the body of Christ and for what the Lord's doing on the earth right now. And just super excited to see what he's done and is doing. And, you know, last week we had Chris uh, share a message of just lost things returning to you. He talked about, you know, he even read a prophetic word of where he felt like the church was about three and a half months ago and where we are now today. And it just feels like a Kairos moment for us. It just feels like the momentum of heaven, whether it's things like the Jesus Revolution movie or just God getting a hold of influencers and you're seeing people that are you know, influencing society, giving their life to Christ. And it just feels like a tangible 
moment in history where we get to see God move his hand across the planet. And, you know, we're seeing things like Asbury Revival sweeping across, not just here, but even overseas. We've seen the Lord doing stuff. And we're just so expectant we're of so what expectant. he's about to do. Chris also talks about recovering things that were lost and yeah. pursuing and taking things back. And so if you had something recovered, go ahead and put testimony and share us what that was. Or if you're like, I'm believing for something, go ahead and put, I'm believing for this. Because we want to join with you and pray. Um, um, Rachel, we see you on the Bethel live stream that you're looking for prayer for your left hand and your bicep in and in, in it's a muscle and nerve uh, that you can't grip your hand with immediate pain. Stephen, I saw that and we just want to declare breakthrough over you right now in the name of Jesus. Um, go ahead. We want to interact with you. So go ahead and put in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's great to see Bill and Elias. And it's good to see some of our online students yes, here with us, I Fernanda and Natalia. Uh, Wilbur, Jennifer, Michael, so good to see you guys joining us this morning. Kentucky but and Cole, really want Ira. you just to set your expectation today, whether it's you're about to go to bed or whether you just woke up, really feel significant of what the Lord's gonna do this morning. Feels like there's gonna be not so much of information, but revelation and impartation. Okay. And I just felt this thing that today, it's more about what's caught, not what's taught. And I feel like there's something in the atmosphere that's tangible. And even what Ruth was saying about lost things being returned to you, I feel like some of you, if you haven't experienced that yet, I feel like some of those things are gonna happen now. And specifically around the realm of finances. I felt like some people on here, you had finances where you uh, thought would be coming to you or you invested in something that didn't go according to plan. I feel like the Lord working all those things together for your good today. And so just to, buckle up and get ready to receive. It's gonna be a powerful time. Sue Kent, I saw you say, today is my birthday. I wanted to say happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. You're on YouTube, but I felt like the Lord said, this is a year of promises and dreams fulfilled. And it's a year of adventure and travel. And I felt like the Lord was gonna open up some dreams that you've had in your heart for a really long time. And I saw travel um, with family or to go and see family and the reconciliation was actually gonna come with your family, like a dream that you've had of your family being united. Um, and so I just bless you with that. I bless you uh, for joining us on your birthday. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Cam said, please pray for healing for my weak nerves. So if you need healing in any part of your body, yeah. right now, go ahead and stand up and put a hand on whatever part of your body it is. We're believing from the very beginning. Today is an encounter. Yeah. Like Steve said, it's not an inf information. It's an encounter with Jesus. It's, it's transformation that the Lord has for us. So stand up, put a hand on whatever part of your body. And right now we're gonna to agree together. So stretch your hands towards the screen, every person, and start praying over each person that needs a miracle in their body. God, we thank you for life for breakthrough and for healing over every person, whether it's that thumb or that nerve, whether it's a family member that you're laying hands on right now. God, I thank you someone's frozen shoulder is getting healed. I saw someone's tailbone getting completely healed after I felt I heard 20 years, something you've had for 20 years. We say be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, come on. And then where you are, just start testing out your body. And then just put in the chat, if your pain was on a scale one to 10, 10 being excruciating, put on what your pain was and then what it is now and even the condition that was there. So you could put shoulder seven to a one or seven to a zero, whatever it is, just put it in the chat and then online community, you know what to do. Yes. Whatever people put in, celebrate, thank Jesus, pray, press in for more breakthrough as we come. And this morning we have a really powerful day. We have Brian and Jen leading us in worship. And so just wanna invite you just to engage from the very start. And even if you're still looking for healing to check out your body throughout worship and then throughout the message is Haley Braun is gonna be speaking today. And I am super pumped for what she has to bring. She's powerful. such a prophetic uh, voice for our house, a good friend of ours, and she is the real deal and I just feel so expectant of what the Lord's going to do. Thanks. But we just want to say thank you so much for joining on with us, your family to us. Welcome on here and we just want to invite you just to engage and connect and to believe uh, for God to do great things. I do want to share one quick testimony. Come on. Um, Cam Longcomer on YouTube, you just said, wow, my frozen shoulder uh, caused by my nerves has been healed. Can we Come just on, praise Jesus. Jesus? He's already started. Come on, people. Jesus. And, uh, go ahead, keep putting your testimonies in the chat. 
keep testing out your body and we'll be checking in with you at the end of the service and we'll have some more fun together and see God do some more amazing, yeah. amazing things. And Nola, with your back pain, I just invite you, what I just saw you do is just slowly stand up and try to bend down and touch your toes three times. And then I saw you just move this with your back and just check it out. Feel like there's gonna be relief and healing come to you as you do that. And so Father, we thank you for what you're doing and we thank you for more. In Jesus' name, bless you guys and we'll see you at the end of the service. Bless you guys. See you soon. Good morning, good morning. Why don't you go ahead and stand up and greet somebody next to you before we begin. Say hello to them. Ask them where they're from, where they live, their social security. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But greet them, be friendly, be kind. Somebody might be sitting next to you who is terrified to be in this room and you get to be that comforting person who says, we're glad you're here. Welcome. And then you get to be that person that makes somebody who feels awkward even more awkward. So go for it. For a couple seconds here, just go ahead and introduce yourself. And if you're online, welcome. We're glad you are with us this morning. We've already heard that God's doing some amazing things online already. People getting healed, 
through our Bethel TV pre-show thing that we do. So it's encouraging to hear that God's already doing some fun stuff this morning. All right. Well done. Well done. Amazing. Well, we're going to pray together this morning, and then we're going to start our time of worship. You guys ready for that? Is that good for you? that work? Awesome. Go ahead and hit the person next to you. Now, you were kind to them. Now, hit them and tell them, hey, we're going to start. We're going to start this thing. Awesome. Okay. There's a verse in Psalms, just a, this one little verse that I want to highlight that just kept going in my mind. There's a bunch of other stuff surrounding this verse, so this isn't an, an expository preaching on this verse, but this verse has just some umph to it, all right? And it's in Psalm 149, and it says this, that high praise will be in their mouth and a double-edged sword in their hand. It says high praise will be in their mouth and a double-edged sword in their hand. I want, I want to tell you, you might think you're just singing this morning. <laughs> some of you might be like, okay, I got to get myself to sing some of these songs. I got to get my voice out. I got to... No, when you enter into the high praise, there's something that's going to happen in your life that God has designed to happen when you worship. That there's some fight that will happen that your contribution to that fight will just be your high praise. You, you, whatever you got going on, I'm not, I'm not concerned about it in the sense that like I, we got all the way from like I need money to I need a miracle for, for a terminal illness. We got every, every scenario across the spectrum. But the one factor is that when you enter into high praise, God starts to move on your behalf differently. And we don't know why, but the scriptures say it. I don't get to define why that stuff works like that, but I can tell you that's what the scripture teaches. That something can happen. So this morning, if I could ask you to do anything, it would be put expectation in your high praise. Put expectation in your high praise that God will move on your behalf in a profound way, that you can actually rest in loving him because he'll take care of the stuff you're worried about. So Father, I thank you that we get to love you this morning that we get to adore you, that we get to enthrone you on our praises and give our deep adoration to you. We ask that you begin to rest upon us in this room, settle on us in a profound way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
just lift your arms now. Just lift your arms, lift your praise. Oh, hey.
Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? There's no sweeter name I know than Jesus. Let's just play that out. I'll sing your own song in today. Your own words.
Yeah, just sing out your own song today. Lift up shouts of praise, magnify him.
Uh, if you're able to stand with us, please do. Uh, we're going to take this in two parts today. If you're able to stand, uh, we're going to pray together uh, about a specific thing, and then I'm going to have you sit down. We're going to share communion. So um, now you know the rules. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I just uh, experienced one of the most uh, incredible weeks of my life this last week for quite a few reasons. But one, I was, I was at a great, great church in Springfield, Missouri, and uh, James River Church there, great, amazing pastors, just can't, can't speak high, too high of them. We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miracles uh, over three nights. But, but the last one is the one I want to tell you about, the last night. By the way, we had a 15-year-old kid praying for someone for healing. He was colorblind. He only saw black and white. And it was like the lights turned on. Suddenly, he saw all color just in a moment, which is so cool, so cool. But that evening, there's multiple campuses. And one of the other campuses streaming the meeting, a woman was there who had been shot twice by her husband. Wow. Anybody else glad that Jesus heals the inside as well as the outside. Yeah. And because of it, she had to have three toes amputated. And I happened that evening to be talking about creative miracles that we've seen. And we just began to pray just randomly for creative miracles. And specifically things like, you know, missing cartilage and, you know, stuff like that that the Lord would just make new. Organs of the body. I have a friend who was missing a kidney, and the Lord recreated a kidney, verified by x rays, all the stuff. So we began to pray into that. And this gal was at one of the other campuses and said, I want my toast back. And so another guy was praying for her. And as I, as I, I, ha, I have the, the statement, it took about 30 minutes, but they saw the bone come, wrap in flesh, completely grow out. And by morning, the toenails, everything had formed. She got three brand new toes. Three brand new toes. And the, now, I have friends who have seen an amputated or lost foot grow back. Working our way up, starting with toes. It's all right. We're starting with toes. The woman who did the praying, her husband is a medical doctor, and he came and examined, and yep, he's, she's got three brand new toes, so that works. I, I guess the person with the three new toes would know, but it's also nice to have a doctor come and check things out and say, guess what, this is for real. One of our own was in an accident, horrible, horrible accident a couple of weeks ago. He's been in a coma ever since some but very little response. Uh, his name is Artist, and the Lord is raising up artists. Artists. I, I want us to pray before we share communion, before we do anything else, in the light of the testimony that he is the one who makes all things new, that today would be the day he would make all the brain damage, all the stuff that has been done, that today he would make all things new for Artist. Artists, one of our own, one of our uh, 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 video crew in the first big snow we had here a couple weeks ago. So if you would, grab a hand of the person next to you. We're going to take maybe a couple minutes, and I want you to declare, we sang it, we sang it many times today about the resurrection life of Jesus. He is the one who makes all things new. In fact, I declare this over you and over artists right now. Jesus Christ makes all things new. Jesus Christ makes all things new. Just pray for artists right now. If you're online, join with us for your own need, but also for this right now.
just declare resurrection life over artist, over his brain, every damaged part. Come to life now in the name of Jesus. We declare Jesus Christ makes all things new. All things new. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to share in communion. So go ahead and take your place, uh, places, all of you down front. Grab your belongings and head back to your seats. How many of you do not have the uh, broken body of Jesus, the shed blood of Jesus? You don't have the cup or the wafer. Put a hand up and we'll get somebody. We have ushers that have the supplies for you. Put your hand up if you're missing it. We've got some over to my left over here, some over here. I don't know if there could be a better song than this last song that we sang uh, to precede our, our time of communion. I think maybe in, uh, Dan, do you know when communion is scheduled for April? Because I want to do it on Easter Sunday. Yeah, let's move it to that. I'm, I'm, we're having a meeting, staff meeting right now. Yeah. On Good Friday as well, good. I want to play the video from Lou Engle uh, about Benny and about the prophecy, the dream, about the great communion revival. We're in a season of time that's very unusual, very unique. I'll, I'll talk about it more on, on Easter uh, Sunday here. Um, there is this prophetic word over the body of Christ, literally around the world, and I'll get into more detail on Easter, about the word is the great communion revival. It's, it's not just bread. The Bible says, if you honor a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And Randy Clark, a couple months ago, mentioned to us, if you come to a wafer as a wafer, you receive a wafer's reward. That really stuck with me. <laughs> but if you come, according to what Jesus said, here, this is my body, broken for you. I want you to take that wafer out, and I want you to break it. I, I, like, to, I like to break it when I, when I take it just to remind me of the brokenness of Jesus. All of you that are joining us, our online family, I encourage you, if you're able to, grab the elements and take with us. We're going to believe God for a massive, massive healing revival. Literally, this week I saw hundreds and hundreds, and it could be actually several thousand people healed this last week. And it's only a drop in the bucket. It, it's, not like, it's not like we need healing to be entertained. We need healing because it displays the love of God. It, it displays God's value for this earthly life. Yes, there is eternity, but there's also now. And he didn't leave us ill-equipped for now. In Ephesians 2, it says that Jesus bore in his body a wall of division. So picture with me, Jew, Gentile. Jew and every other nation. Jew, the haves, Gentiles, the have-nots. Jews, the chosen, the not chosen. And Jesus said there's a wall of division between the two. And when he suffered on the cross, his body was broken. And Ephesians 2 says that that wall of division was destroyed. Listen to me you don't know of a situation that needs peace that he can't bring peace to. You don't know of a broken relationship, a broken uh, context that he cannot release peace to. So I want you to stand with me. And we're going to pray just real quickly, but I want you to declare over any family uh, 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 situation, conflict, or maybe it's in your neighborhood, could be at your place where you work, but any place where there's division, I want you to just declare with me 
the brokenness of Jesus is more than enough to fix that. And then mention, mention the name. Just the brokenness of Jesus. His broken body is enough to settle that issue. Lift your voices because I want you to declare it out loud. We just declare the brokenness of Jesus. You know what else the peace of God can fix? Our banking crisis in our country right now. So we just declare that healing word that you give divine wisdom to those who need the divine wisdom to lead us into a place of health. In Jesus' name. Let's take this bread together. When I take communion to home, I like to take the bread and I like to just say, Jesus, I receive your body into mine. It's your broken body. I receive it as your body into mine. Now let's take the cup. There are several things I like to declare when I have the cup. One is the blood of Jesus sets me free. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There is no forgiveness. It's the shedding of blood that took care of the power of sin. I want you to hold this cup and just declare with me, the blood of Jesus sets me free. Now put a family member's name in there. The blood of Jesus sets, and mention that family member. That's right, mention their name. The blood of Jesus. A friend, a relative, a work partner. The blood of Jesus sets them free. I remember hearing Stacy Campbell several years back. She was talking about watching the news and seeing these horrible international crises. And then it came upon her that the blood of Jesus was enough. So she'd see an international crisis and she'd look at it and say, the blood of Jesus is enough for that. The blood of Jesus is enough for that. So take one situation, just declare it right now. The blood of Jesus is enough for that. Look at it square in the face. The blood of Jesus is enough for that. In honor of the name Jesus, we celebrate the power of the blood. Let's receive it together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now go ahead and pass that uh, sticky cup down the aisle. And we've got people coming along the side that will pick them up. Why don't you turn bless somebody while you're at it. And uh, worship team, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Bless our worship team, would you please honor them. So, so good. It, it looks like you, there might be a few extra. If you have a seat next to you, just raise your hand. Oh, there's all kinds of seats. So if you're looking for a seat, look, look for a hand and you have a seat. Thank you, thank you. Yep, they're looking. We got them. Well, I just, okay, you can put your hands down now. I think we're good. <laughs> because we, you might have, we might have a lot of visitors, but online we want to welcome you. If this is your first time online watching Bethel or here at Bethel Church, I'd like you to raise your hand because we'd love to welcome you. Nice and high, all over. So happy to have you. Oh, keep your hands up. Keep your, oh, give them a bigger, bigger welcome. Yes. So thankful you're here today and online. We're so thankful to have you. We welcome you. And if you um, get the little brochure, take it out to the South Lobby, fill it out. And um, we have people who would love to pray with you and just get to know you a little bit more. So also, I have something exciting to tell you. A save the date for April 7th. It's Good Friday. And we will have two services here at 4 and 6 p.m. So you'll want to mark that in your calendar, April 7th. 4 and 6 p.m. Good Friday service. And guess what's now? Church news. Yay! Hi, Bethel family. We've got some updates for you. Here's this week's church news. Young Saints Camp is coming up. And fun fact, I've never been to a youth camp. 
Oh, you have to go. Just I, jump in. I guess so. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Junior high camp this year is June 23rd through 26th, and high school June 26th through 30th. You can register today at Bethel.com slash church news. Sign me up. Yeah. Wonder Women's Conference is almost here, and we are so excited. Women from around the world, including here in Reading, are coming to town to encounter God. Additional to our amazing Bethel Women speakers and worship leaders, we're going to have some special guests, Lise Revere, Krista Smith, and Kelly Elegantal. So cool. There's still time to join us, so to find out more and save your spot, head to Bethel.com slash events. God's really been moving in prayer, and for those of you who have been stirred, we have a special opportunity to equip you through our healing rooms and ministry team trainings. And starting Tuesday, March 28th at 7 p.m. in the Great Room, it's gonna run for five weeks. Five weeks! So register at Bethel.com slash church news. Our new Bethel music album, Come Up Here, is out now, and it's available everywhere you listen to music. And I'm absolutely loving Surrounded by Holy. Zaria did an amazing job. She's wonderful. I cannot wait because today only, there is a special pop-up shop in the South Lobby where you can get exclusive merch. So be sure to check that out after service. This album is based around Revelation 4 that says, Come Up Here. So watch the short video to catch the vision. That's it for this week's church news. If you'd like to hear these announcements again, visit Bethel.com slash church news. We love you. Bye. Throughout your life, it can be easy to forget yourself, your purpose, and your story. Do you remember who you really are? It's time. Wake up to wonder. It is offering time as our ushers come forward. If you need a giving envelope, please raise your hand. You know, I just love that song that we sang, To the Nations Will Witness This. And I wanted to just give you an update. This last week, we launched our Flaming Arrows burning revivalists all over the world. Five different con uh, continents, over 1,600 students are heading out uh, from the mountains of the Himalayas uh, to the previous killing fields in Cambodia, from earthquake zones in Ecuador and Turkey to, uh, to Ireland. We're actually even sending some of our young saints, uh, high school kids to, to Ireland the gospel is going out. We're getting to, to be witnesses all over the world. And so just wanted to update you, continue to pray. God says, raise up laborers, pray them out. And so we've got laborers heading out. Let's pray them out, amen? Why don't you stand with me as we prepare to take our tithes and offerings. We're gonna read uh, declaration number two, if we can do that. Let's do it together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, 
that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase upon me so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of you that are visiting with us or our guests online who are involved in your local church, we encourage you, your tithe belongs in your local church, but this is great soil to, to sow in your sacrificial offerings and gifts. So uh, let's just pray. Let's pray together as we take this offering. You can be seated as we pray, as the, author, author, uh, the, uh, the baskets are passed. So Jesus, we just thank you for the chance this morning to sow into your kingdom, to align our financial resources with heaven. Lord, I, th I think of your words where you said, uh, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And that's what we do this morning, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory and all of God's people said, amen. amen. We have another burning one, a flaming arrow, who's going to come and speak to us this morning and stir up our hearts. Would you welcome Haley Braun? Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Listen, I've, this is my third service, so it's afternoon already for my body clock, but... Um, it's so good to be with you all. I think we should have a competition for all Bethel staff to do to see who could uh, do the offering readings by heart, because I think I would win for the first two at least. So I'm like, I feel like for our next, Christ next Christmas party, that's what we should do. Who can recite the offering readings? Um, how many of you in this room could recite one of them by heart? Yes. Those are the ones that get the offering. Just so you know, you receive the benefit. For those that have uh, memorized it, it's yours. For those that haven't memorized yet, you still got time. Um, it is honestly so wonderful to be with you. Um, this is the third time I've done this message, so either it's gonna come out great because practice makes perfect, or it's gonna get all mumbled up and, um, oh, my, apparently my hair is like a Christmas tree on my mic. <laughs> no, um, actually, I'm, I feel really excited to share with you. I think the only challenge is, is how to fit it into 33 minutes and 23 seconds, um, what I have, but I really believe that the Lord, more than anything, is gonna stir you up today and that you're gonna receive um, a hunger from heaven for more of what God has for you. It feels like, you know, I think one thing that I've, I mean, I've been here for 15 years, isn't that wild? Been, in August, I would have been here in Reading for 15 years. I told my mom nine months. So clearly uh, didn't intentionally lie, but failed her on that one. And uh, I think something that I really appreciate and value about this house is that it values the Word of the Lord and it, it lets the Word of the Lord kind of guide us as a compass for what He is doing so that we can come into alignment with that. And I feel like I've been hearing a theme throughout our environment for the last few weeks, at least. Um, and that is all around kind of the foundation of faith. You've heard Chris has kind of been carrying this message of faith. And then both Havilah and Bill have preached on the transformed mind. And um, I feel like those two things are actually really foundational to who we are. Bill's second book was The Supernatural Power of the Transformed Mind, um, kind of following on after when heaven invades earth. And both the, the power of the transformed mind and the establishment of our faith as believers are two very fundamental things to the establishment of the kingdom on earth. And um, as I was kind of thinking through that, realizing that when God is kind of reinforcing those foundations of our belief system, that if He's there to reveal and establish the kingdom to us, then it's a season where He is revealing the King. And Bill was talking about the communion revival. You know, the, a kingdom looks like it's King. So a country that is ruled by a, a wise man, an a integrous man is a country that's thriving and prospering as a country that's being ruled by a, an evil man or a man that is not integrous, it is not thriving, it's in ruins. Often you find select people are really thriving and everyone else is struggling. And, and with our kingdom, it is ruled by the greatest, wisest, most beautiful, purest, and the, the king of all kings. Yeah. 
And um, I believe in, in this season, we are actually going to step into many powerful revelations of things we have heard before, but we're gonna come into an understanding and enter into an experience of who Jesus is and what He has done and what that means for us. And um, that is, you know, I, I've been saved since I was three years old. So I, pretty much my whole cognitive life that I'm aware. And still to this day, I feel like the Holy Spirit is awakening my heart to deeper mysteries, to more powerful, um, maybe to these truths that I've known, packing a more powerful punch in my being and provoking a response from me that goes beyond the knowledge that I've known. You know, in, um, thank you, in Isaiah 11, it talks about the shoot that will rise up from the stumps. They're talking about Jesus from the dead places, from these broken dead places, from the stump. Jesus is gonna rise up and the Spirit of God is gonna rest upon Him. And it explains the Spirit of wisdom, of revelation, of counsel and of might, of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. These are some of the manifestations of what happens when the Holy Spirit starts working in your life. You begin to see Jesus rightly. That's John 16 talking about the, the Holy Spirit glorifies the Son. And I believe we're in this time where Jesus must be glorified, the cross must be magnified and the great work that He has done must be seen by believers so that we can enter in and do the work we've been called to, amen? And so um, I want to bring you into something. A few weeks ago, I had a dream. I actually can't remember the dream. All I remember was the line when I woke, woke up, what I heard when I woke, when I woke up. I got toddlers, that's why. I couldn't be, uh, yeah, anyway. Okay. <laughs> and the line when I woke up was, he said, the key to victory of the bride in this season is Miriam's song. And I thought, oh, fantastic, Miriam's song. All I remembered of Miriam was a tambourine. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know if it was like, a, you know, kid stuff. When I, whenever I think of Palm Sunday, I, I legitimately think of me walking down the back of our Methodist church with palms and my shirt waving and a donkey that we had uh, hired, a very bad donkey actually, that ended up kicking one of the kids. Uh, so that's what I remember of Palm Sunday. And what I remember of Miriam is a tambourine. So someone must have brought out a tambourine with like little strings on it, you know? And I thought to save us all um, the joyful noise of us all having a tambourine, I thought I'd read the Word instead of give you all tambourines. Because um, a joyful noise and a beautiful noise are two different things. All beautiful to the Lord, not to all of us. And um, so I began to like, okay, Miriam's song, yay. So I started looking for Miriam's song in the Bible. Obviously, that's the next thing you do. Okay, what is Miriam's song? Um, but I actually found that before we hit Miriam's song, we need to probably look at who Miriam is. And Miriam, interestingly enough, in, in the kind of the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible um, that you know, comes from the kind of Jewish heritage and, and what they kind of carry as their word, the, the Torah, um, so sorry, I lost my place. The, the Torah actually only mentions a few women when they're talking about genealogies. They mostly are talking about males, but Miriam is actually distinctly mentioned. And so Miriam is kind of like a central figurehead to the establishment of what God was doing early in our faith. And the entrance point for Miriam is this beautiful story about Moses. Now, a little bit of history before we, we hit Exodus 2, because I'm gonna paraphrase some of it. It starts off with them saying that the Pharaoh had forgotten Joseph. So if you, up until this point, we've had, you know, the Israelites, they, they moved into Egypt because Joseph had, you know, Joseph had been put in prison and then he came out of prison and then he interpreted a dream of Pharaoh about seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. And then he saved all this grain. And then the Israelites were poor and starving during famine and they came and, a season, a series of, unse of uh, unfortunate events for the brothers of Joseph. They began to discover, oh, the brother they threw in a pit and sold into slavery is now holding all the grain that they need. And, um, and through reconciliation, all of Israel, so Israel was Jacob's family. Jacob's new name was Israel. And his 12 sons, who are the 12 tribes, end up moving to Egypt. I'm looking at Dan. Dan, if I'm wrong, you just, I'm doing great. Yeah, get a bit nervous with the theologian on the front of the... Uh, no, yeah, it moves into, they go in and they live in Egypt and they actually are living in a beautiful connection. There's a value for Joseph, there's a value for his family and the Israelites and the Egyptians have been living in peace. 
But through inheritance and different Pharaohs coming through, this Pharaoh has now forgotten Joseph. And his connection and his love and affection for the people of Israel has become competition. And he's seeing that they're strong and that they're growing in number and that they're, they're powerful people. And in those days, powerful people overthrow governments and they take land, that's what they do. And so he gets really nervous and he starts um, enslaving the people of Israel. And so Miriam is born right into this time of slavery where the tyrannical rule of Pharaoh is now raising its right hand against them. And they're beginning to oppress the Israelites and they're getting harsher. And eventually the Pharaoh starts saying, we're gonna kill all these boys. You know, the midwives need to murder boys as soon as they're born. If they're, and then uh, the midwives don't do that. So they're like, we're gonna drown them in the Nile. I mean, Miriam's born into this. Yeah. Trauma, pain, anxiety, fear. Can you imagine living in a household like that? And um, they, they think that she's about six when Moses is born. And Moses is born into this. In fact, Miriam's name means bitter. Not because she's bitter, but because she was birthed in a bitter season for the people. And so she is identified by the pain of the season just from her name, from the get-go. And so um, carrying this identification of the pain, her little brother, well, Aaron's born, and then Moses is born during this time when they are now murdering little boys. And uh, Miriam's mom can't hide Moses anymore. And this is the first time we see Miriam in the Bible. So Exodus 2, chapter three, talking about Moses' mom, when she could no longer hide him, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and she, and she um, so she like laid, she kind of smoothed out bitumen and pitch, which is like tar. And she put the child in it and placed him amongst the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister, sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now, I don't know what kind of six-year-old is watching the potential murder of her brother. It must be a pretty courageous one a little girl that has a fire in her and she's watching from a distance what's gonna happen to her brother. And I think inside of her, there's a flicker of hope that something could be different, but I'm sure a lot of anxiety that the same thing is gonna happen that she's probably seen for the last, the last season. Now, uh, chapter five, sorry, verse five. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river and while her young woman walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman when she took it. When she opened it and saw the child and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then the sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, imagine this, she's hiding, kind of watching what's happening and she interjects this moment with the idea of all ideas. She plants the seed in Pharaoh's daughter's head that, hey, I know a Hebrew woman that can nurse this little boy if you want him. And she plants the seed already of redemption for her brother in Pharaoh's daughter's mind. And the Pharaoh's daughter goes, great, you know what? Why don't you take him to the mom and I'll pay her. I'll pay that lady, whatever Hebrew woman is, to nurse her. So now mom gets to nurse her son, which they think at this stage, kind of they wean them around eight years old. So this is a significant amount of time with his family. And then later on, uh, Moses is returned back into Pharaoh's household to live with Pharaoh's daughter. Now this, time, you know, this exciting moment, Miriam steps in, intervenes, but this moment doesn't change everything. Moses goes back into the palace and Miriam is still faced the same oppression that she was born into. Miriam is still living in, in fact, it's getting worse. And we know that because Moses ends up murdering a, um, a slave driver of the Egyptians and flees into the wilderness. So even Moses in his adult years is still facing and watching the oppression of his people. So you can only imagine what Miriam was, being, what, what Miriam was living in. And then you see Moses returning, the seven plagues, Pharaoh releases them. They go into the wilderness, leaving everything they know, all of their comfort into an unknown place, but at least they're free. And while in the wilderness, you can turn to Exodus 15 while I tell you this, while in the wilderness, fleeing um, for their lives into an unknown place, they hear the sound of horses and chariots starting to pursue them. And it sounds probably like thunder. Now, this is a moment they're not thinking they're gonna pursue me, capture me and probably put me into slavery. They're thinking they're gonna pursue us, capture us and probably kill most of us before and the ones that kind of get left will probably go back. 
The same feeling of anxiety, trauma, the same muscle memory that they experienced from the history is now chasing them from behind. And we come to this moment in Exodus 14, where that little boy that was put in a basket, that little boy that his sister spoke up for, now stands in front of the Red Sea, raises his staff and a miracle happens. Can you imagine what it must have been like for them to walk across dry ground and the sound of the thunderous waves after the power of God had held it back and then pulled it over the enemy and the feeling of victory that they might have felt. I could only imagine that moment for Miriam as she's seeing that same little brother that was in a basket one day is now delivering an entire nation. Up until all of this point, her history, her pain is now a moment of redemption. And Moses sings this song and actually the the kind of scholars are unsure if it's just Moses or Miriam sings the whole song, but ultimately the Lord woke me up and said that it's Miriam's song. And I believe because Miriam's song is more than just what we say, but it is a song of declaration that ushers us in to redemption. So I'm gonna read some of what Moses sang. I'm gonna try to go quick, so I'm not gonna read all of it. We just gotta get to the nostrils part because it's my favourite. Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for He has triumphed great, gloriously. The horse and his rider has, He has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and He has become my salvation. Say that, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my song and He is my salvation. Mm, I'll keep reading. This is my God and I will praise Him. My Father's God, I will exalt Him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is His name. Pharaoh's chariots and His host He cast into the sea and and His chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them and they went down into the depths like a stone. Say, my fear goes down into the depths like a stone. Hmm. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. Say, in the greatness of His majesty, my adversaries are defeated. You send out your fury, it consumes them like stubble. The blast of your nostrils, at the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap and the deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. I just want you to imagine one exhale from God's nose caused the water to crash over their enemies. People say one touch from Jesus can take your life. Well, one breath from the Lord will transform you and crush the head of your enemy. How exciting. This isn't good. This isn't just a good saying. This isn't a good poster. This is our reality as the people of God. To think that the fragrance of our life, that He inhales the fragrance of our life, that that same nose that could breathe air, that could vanquish enemies is the same nose that delights in the offering of our love. (laughs) Verse nine, the enemy said, I will pursue you. I will overtake you. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword and my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? Your your stretched out right hand, the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. I invite you to read the rest of that passage over yourself this week. But we're gonna go to verse 20. Then Miriam the prophetess and the sister of Aaron took the tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with the tambourines and dancing and Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has thrown into the sea. For the sake of time, I wanna talk to you when the Lord said to me, the key to victory in this season is Miriam's song. I believe the key to us beholding the Lord, to understanding His kingdom and carrying His authority and His power and His love in who we are and who He created us to be is the song of praise. 
It is the song of victory. It is the song of His redemption. This is not just a redemption moment, but it is the introduction to a Redeemer who is coming, who we have now partaken of, and now we walk in the glorious light of His face. This story of redemption is to introduce us to our Redeemer who we know lives. And so I wanna bring three points. I grew up in a Methodist church and there's nothing like a good three point sermon to do in 15 minutes. And so we're gonna um, bring three points. I'm gonna kind of touch on the first one, but the last two are the ones I wanna focus on. The first one is the redemption song speaks of the loyalty of God. We're gonna talk about His Lordship and His glory next, but I wanna tell you that it's hard to submit to the Lordship of a God we don't believe is loyal and faithful. Moses said, you are the God of my father. What is he saying? He's saying it wasn't just a moment. It wasn't just a season. The same God of my father, the same God of the generations is here with me today. He is the Lord. He is my God and He has redeemed me like He's redeemed my history and how He will redeem my future. God is loyal. Revelation 19 says that faithful and true is His name. It means it is His identity. You do not change your identity. Your identity is formed by the Lord and God's identity is faithful, which means He stands there available, looking at you ready at any time. It's just us that turn. There's no shadow of turning in Him. 2 Timothy 2.3 says that He is faithful when we are faithless, which means when I'm hopeless, when I'm down and out, when I'm turned away, when I'm lacking, when I have no, nothing in, in me to, to conjure up any more passion or power, he is faithful and I can ride in on His faithfulness. What kind of king is this? What kind of God is this? He is our God and He is our King. My second point is that the song of redemption speaks of His Lordship. When we talk of His loyalty and His faithfulness, it allows us to come into a place where we recognise He is Lord. I don't know how many of you have ever um, Googled your symptoms. Anything from the common cold to death in one moment. You stubbed your toe or you're dying in the next four hours. You know what I mean? You Google, I don't know if you've ever Googled something's wrong with your car. I have, I remember once my car battery was dead. We got a new battery, still the car didn't work. Well, I'm a really good researcher. So I'm like researching away. Found out it was my, it was my alternator. So I thought, you know? And um, I was actually right, it was my alternator, but I could explain all these reasons why to my husband it was my alternator, but open the hood of the car and ask me where the alternator is, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like, I don't know what it does, and I don't know how to fix it. I know the problem, I have no clue the design. Here is the issue with the world today. We know the problem, we are disconnected from design. We have so much information, we can diagnose, we can pull it apart, we can tell you what's going on. But the truth is we do not have the solution to the problem because we are not the Lord of our lives. You are not the author, you are not the creator and you are not the perf perfecter, but there is one who is. And you take that car to someone who knows and it's gonna be riding in just a moment. God's Lordship in this generation, we believe Lordship is limitation. But Lordship is an invitation to authority. <laughs> the journey and the masterful plan of God's order and organisation of the series of events that brought us to this place where we are filled with the Holy Spirit and you get to hear messages of authority was so intricately designed and thought up, no human being could have made up this story. One, no human being would believe that God's glory would wanna fill us. Just so you know, we're too well acquainted with our lack to believe that God's redemption plan was the people that crucified Him. I just wanna tell you, it is a wild thought. He could have done anything and He didn't do a do-over. He picked you. But the plan of God from the crucifixion to the resurrection, to the ascension and to the coming of the Holy Spirit so well established His plan to bring His kingdom to the earth through your life. Are you with me? The crucifixion restored us, it redeemed us, it set us free, it liberated us, it brought us into connection with God that we on this earth don't have to live disconnected but can live connected as sons and daughters. 
But the crucifixion doesn't end. The crucifixion is the entrance point. It is only by the blood of Jesus that we enter into the kingdom. It is only by the blood of Jesus that we are cleansed. It is only by the blood of Jesus that we are free. But as we enter the small door of mercy, we enter into a greater door of the resurrection. And the resurrection is a promise that your life goes beyond this moment. Your life goes beyond the statements of the world. Your life goes beyond persecution. Your life goes beyond any harm that could come to you because your body may one day breathe its last breath, but your spirit will live in the resurrection of Jesus. And that resurrection life gives me the perspective of eternity that I live for more than just this moment. If the great cloud of witnesses are cheering us on because they don't get to enter their inheritance apart from us, your life must matter. Hmm. And so with the crucifixion and the resurrection tells me there is power in this story. There is, there is power for us to carry as the people of God. But we all know that a gun without a badge is no, is no use. You end up in jail. <laughs> if the resurrection is the power, then the ascension is the authority. And Jesus ascended, name above every name, above every authority, every ruler. Listen, Jesus is not in equal to the assault of the enemy on your life. Jesus is not in equal to the hardship you are facing. Jesus is not equal to that familiar spirit of fear. Jesus is not equal to your insecurity. Jesus is not equal to your personality or to your flaws. Jesus is not equal to the history of your sin. Jesus is not equal to your shame. He is seated above. Jesus is not equal to your offence or your unforgiveness or to your, your Trauma even, I'm trying to think of things that are unoffensive, but it's true. We can find a whole lot of reasons to disqualify ourselves, but Jesus, He is not equal to cancer. He is not equal to heart disease. He is above. He is seated high above. And it says in the Word that you are hidden in Him and seated in heavenly places. His Lordship establishes His rule and our obedience to His Lordship allows us to walk in authority. You cannot walk in His authority without being obedient to His Lordship. Many want to go in friendship, but the establishment of His Lordship is paramount to walking in friendship. We don't just get to be buddy-buddy with the King of Glory. We gotta go His way. And then the final, Probably my, I like it all. But the coming of the Spirit becomes the activation of the believer in all of these things. The movement of the Spirit of the living God within you. And this is my final point that I wanna make. So if the redemption song tells us of His loyalty, if the redemption song exalts His Lordship, then the redemption song reveals His glory. Colossians 1.27 says that Christ in you is the hope of glory. I wanna go back real quick. I'm so sorry, I skipped this part in Lordship and I feel like I need to say this for the glory part. Yes. When Bill preached two weeks ago on 2 Corinthians 10, I just want you to open there real quick. 2 Corinthians 10, chapter five is what I wanna focus on when he was speaking on the transformed mind. He made this statement that really stood out to me. And when it did, it was like I, I received revelation from the Lord of what it meant for my life. So uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse three, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but we have di divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and lofty opinion. I want you to think about those those voices that you hear right on the edge of breakthrough that you stand, the voices that tell you just what you can and can't do. Those are the voices we're talking about tearing down. Arguments and lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. When Bill read that, immediately I saw those things that come against me as like a figure, like a spirit, right? And I saw myself trying to pull that spirit to my feet. And I saw myself trying to preach what I knew about God to that spirit. And immediately I had this feeling of feeling maybe tired or on my weakest day, on my faithless day, that I actually would engage in discussion. And I'd start believing that voice. Yeah, maybe I am a little too much. Maybe I am, you know, too intense, too fiery, too, you know. And then you start like maybe, and then we start getting worn down, right? 
But I saw this picture of me, instead of bringing it to my feet, I saw me dragging it to the, to the Word. And I saw myself reading the Word to me and to the Spirit. And immediately I felt the sweet relief of I don't have to know all the things. I just have to read the letter that was written to me by my King. You mean Jesus in the wilderness was faced with temptation after 40 days. What was the first question the enemy asked him? If you are the Son of God. 40 days after a radical encounter in the baptismal river, the, the sky opens and what does the Lord say? This is my Son. A voice from the sky is speaking, a dove descends. I bet you the enemy was watching all of that. And Jesus doesn't fight the enemy 40 days after that encounter with an encounter. He fights it with the Word. He says, I'm gonna take you and we're gonna read together. I'm gonna read to you Exodus 15 with His nostrils. I'm gonna tell you what happens to you with His nostrils. <laughs> Because under His Lordship, I get to carry His authority. And when I walk in His authority, redemption reveals His glory. Miriam didn't just have a moment. Woohoo, this is amazing. No, Miriam grabbed all the women. She got herself an instrument and she started loudly declaring. Six years, at six years old, my life wasn't a waste. At six years old, all that pain that I was experiencing, a moment of choice is now my redemption. And she said, my life may be bitter, but I'm gonna bring you into the redemption of my praise. And she didn't just have a moment with the Lord, but she began to bring a company of people into a redemption story and God began to receive His glory. He, was, he, was, he became known for His loyalty, for His goodness. He became known for His might, for His Lordship, and then His glory. And this is the promise for us as believers. Your inheritance, your inheritance is not some meager slice of a pie that you might, may or may not get one day. Your inheritance is securely found in a man, fully God, seated in glory. Bill shared with our second years recently that Martin Luther came with the truth of the Word to a people believing that salvation could take days, weeks or months, that you'd have to pray for a long time until you'd believe you were saved. And with a revelation of the Word of God, carrying the truth of what the Lord says that your, your salvation, you don't receive it by works, but by faith. As he began to preach the message, another generation grabbed a hold of it and they paid the price for it. And today, someone can walk in the back of this room and say, I wanna get saved and we, we will pray a prayer with them. And in two minutes by faith, we will know that their salvation is secure. There are two other parts of what the cross accomplished and that's poverty and sickness. Bethel Church, we're an apostolic house. That, is, that has been believing because of the cost and the price of our fathers, believing that one day sickness, cancer would bow at the name of Jesus. What does it look like for us to believe that our inheritance is to carry His glory and reveal it to the world? What does it look like for the generations to come when we carry with boldness the truth of who Jesus is, what He has done, where He is seated and what that means for us? What does that mean for our children? I think about what that means when my son wakes up with an asthma attack, what it looks like for someone to carry that revelation in such vibrancy and such faith that the enemy's plans are vanquished. You can open to Ephesians 1 and we're gonna close with this. This provokes me. You know, like on my, on my worst day, sometimes it's hard to believe that God would fill me with His glory. But the truth is that I don't need to understand it. I just need to enter in. I probably read Ephesians 1 over myself over the last three years. I've probably read it at least weekly over myself and prayed it over my family. It's one of the greatest things I've received from the Lord. 
And this is the prayer that Paul prays, verse 17. It's worth reading the whole thing, by the way. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, I want to know you. I want to know Jesus. Verse 18, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you. Say, God, I want to know the hope to which you have called me. I want, I'm, I'm glad you asked because the next part tells you. What are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of His power towards us who believe? According to the working of His great might that He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in heavenly places. Does anyone have a Kleenex for me? I'm so sorry. That's what happens when you cry. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. We'll go, verse 20, that worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above the rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And He put all things under His feet and gave Him as head of all things to the church, which is His body the fullness of Him who fills all in all. Fills all in all. He fills all in all. You might be sitting here struggling to forgive someone. The fullness of Him fills all in all. This isn't just for a stadium moment. This is for our day-to-day lives. It is the song of praise and redemption Church, I believe we're being invited into a song that glorifies the Lord. When you feel that that nagging voice that wants to tell you who you are or what you are not, I encourage you to begin to sing the song of praise of a Redeemer that lives and is alive and moves within you. When the world lines up all the voices and all the gods like they did in Act 17, that you would know the God which in Him you live and move and have your being. The Lord is awakening us to the reality of the glory of our inheritance. And the glory of our inheritance is a King and a Kingdom that cannot and will not be shaken. Will you stand? I want to pray for you. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And today he roars over you. You can put your hands out in front of you on your heart. Holy Spirit, would you awaken the song of the redeemed in our souls? Would you awaken our hearts to the reality of the greatness of our King? Would you awaken us to the immeasurably great power for those who believe? God, we say today, we believe. Help me in my unbelief. And Holy Spirit, we know you are faithful to meet us in every place that we are faithless and fill us with the hope of a glorious inheritance. Jesus, today we pray that Your majesty, Your glory, Your might and Your power would be magnified in our eyes. Lord, let the song of praise and victory rise from Your people to magnify a King who breathes on the sea and vanquishes their enemies. God, would you come and breathe your breath on us? Lord, we know we cannot awaken ourselves, but you have made every provision for us to live in the fullness of our inheritance. Not for one day, but for today. And so Lord, we receive. We receive those in this room and those watching online. We receive. Holy Spirit, awaken your bride. We welcome you. 
King Jesus be magnified and let your kingdom be established in our lives, in this city, in our nation. Amen. Wow. Wow. Would you hold your places for just a moment? We cannot hear a message like that and not, if you're a believer, I say this in jest, want to get born again again, because I was as Haley was preaching. But if, if you are in the room, you're watching online right now, live or in the hours or days to come, you are watching this by the hand of the Lord, by the intentionality of a God who loves you, who is for you and has prepared a way for you. If you are in the room, in this room or the great room right now and you are joining us, you are not here by coincidence or by invitation of a person. You are here on assignment by God. And as Haley was sharing, if, if you haven't made that decision to joyfully with the fear of the Lord, but with uh, expectation of being under the Lordship of Jesus, the Bible says, forget not His benefits. If you wanna walk from darkness into light, if you know you are not a believer and you have not made Jesus your Lord, and your Saviour. We wanna invite you to make that decision right now and you're surrounded by friends and family who are gonna celebrate with you. We know all of heaven rejoices. If that's you right now with every eye open because this is a bold and joyful decision, I'm gonna invite you to raise your hand. If you wanna make Jesus Christ your Lord and Saviour, would you raise your hand right now and we're gonna pray with you. Thank you, over here, beautiful. To you at the back. We're so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in the great room, just raise your hand. And if you're watching live online, would you write in the chat, that's me, G- I wanna make Jesus my Lord and my Saviour. We have uh, Steve and Ruth Moore who are gonna join you in just a few moments who will pray with you and then pastors who are online. If you raised your hand, I'm gonna ask you to take another step or perhaps you didn't raise your hand. We want to make time for this important moment and decision. We have trusted friends who are here underneath this banner. I wanna invite you right now to, if you've come with this man or or woman who raised their hand right now, would you join them and bring them to the front right now and we'll pray with you, connect with you um, and get you on this wild, adventurous road of walking with Jesus. Thanks God. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that all of heaven, all the angels rejoice and celebrate and we wanna do that with them right now in this moment. Beautiful. And you can come from the back. Bethel family, we're so grateful you joined us. If you are part of our ministry team, why don't you make your way to the front right now? If you're part of our staff team or serve as a volunteer or you are part of our school ministry team, come line up right here in the front. And then I invite you, come forward for ministry, for prayer. We'd love to connect with you and to partner in the miracle of Jesus in your life. And for the rest of us, we bless you to have a incredible day with the Lord. And then we'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. for our Sunday evening service. We bless you in Jesus' name. Wow, 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 what a powerful morning. We are so thankful that you joined us. And we just wanna kind of piggyback off of what Libby has just released. If if you wanna give your life to Jesus, first and foremost, if that's you, um, yes, go ahead, put it in the chat, but we wanna pray over you as well. So go ahead and just stand up where you are if you're able to. And Father, I thank You that You came to set us free. God, I thank You that You died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and to give us life and life to the full, not just when we die and go to heaven, but now in this life. And so Father, I thank You that You do make all things new. And I speak to every person that is responding. I feel like there's somebody, even you're going, I've given my life to the Lord, but I wanna recommit and I've stumbled across this and I wanna recommit. 
And so God, I thank you for that person right now. And I speak life and a fresh set of vision, a fresh vision for you. I feel like the Lord's giving you new eyes and taking off almost a veil over your eyes where it's been kind of like, I can't, I'm not sure I'm connecting with the Lord or with people. So I bless you. Again, if that is you, go ahead and put it in the chat just so we can follow up with you. Um, and we want to celebrate with you as well that you um, are part of this family with us. So. Yeah, just what Haley shared, I don't need to say, it was just so powerful, so significant. And I just could tangibly feel the presence of God in the room. And I feel the tangible presence of the Lord filling where you are right now. And so what I would invite you to do is just open your hands like you're about to receive a gift. There's nothing magical about it, but it's just a reminder we get to receive, not achieve. We're not trying to perform and earn something. We're actually just receiving what was just poured out and what was just released. And I wanna pray over you. Father, I thank you right now for an outpouring of your spirit, that your faithfulness, your lordship would be the governing factors over our life, that it wouldn't be about what we could do, but it's about, about what you did and what you are doing. Father, we just submit everything that is going on in your life under your Lordship right now. And Father, I thank you for the authority of heaven to come on us. Father, I thank you for a revealing of your glory. And Father, I thank you for your glory going forth right now over every single person watching. And Father, I ask specifically to release your glory over Christine right now. And if you're watching, whether on Bethel TV or on YouTube, Christine's on our YouTube audience. She just said she has stage four breast cancer. And so right now we just release the glory of God over your body, Christine. We command you to be well. I release strength over you. Cancer, we curse you and we command you to be gone. All symptoms to be gone right now. No more pain, no more issues, no more lumps. We command them to be gone in Jesus' name. Cancer, you have no place. And then right now, if you need any healing in your body, you need any miracle in your body, Bill talked about it over worship, just the amount of outpouring of miracles that we've been seeing as of late, that even he shared a testimony of a lady's toes, three toes, growing back and she was at a satellite campus watching the stream, watching the stream. And so you all watching the stream right now, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is available right now in your room. And so if you need healing in your back, healing in your knee and your shoulder and your neck and your nose, you have problems in your feet, your toes, your fingers, if you have cancer, if you have a heart condition, any condition right yeah, now. I hope we see you needing the heart arrhythmia. Um, Deborah, we see you saying you need a creative yes, miracle for your new hip cartilage. That's something Bill was releasing. So go ahead, just stand up yeah, where Rachel, you're at right now. Rachel, we see you right now. Pain from her arm and a hand has gone from a 10 to a six, a wow, lot more mobile. Thank, thank you, Father. Jesus, for what you're doing. But right now, if you need a miracle, if you're able, I want you to invite you to stand. If you're able, if you're not, just hold out your hands like you're about to receive a gift. And those standing, open up your hands like you're about to receive something. Holy Spirit, I thank you for creative miracles going forth right now. We command all pain out of every single person's body. We command pain from the shoulder and the arm that was at a six in Rachel's body down to a zero right now. We release uh, grace and mobility over people. I command all back pain, knee pain, hand pain, carpal tunnel, arthritis, neck pain, any trauma in the body, we command you to get out right now and release full mobility and full healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah, we declare over you, the blood of Jesus is more than enough. Yes. Just as Bill released in that communion, the blood of Jesus is more than enough. And together as a family around the globe, uh, under the Lordship of Jesus, we take authority over every sickness and every condition we say be healed in Jesus' name. We see uh, many of you writing in the chat, uh, Kil Kilistina, I'm not sure if that's how you say your name, but so you're saying, please include me. Uh, we are including you. We are believing with you. We are reading this chat as we go and we're partnering our faith with yours. So right now we say, body, come into line with heaven in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and then right now, whether you notice any change uh, or not, like whether for good or the bad, I want you to start testing out your body. Start moving it around and start looking for any change for the good. And any change, just start thanking Jesus. And then if you can, just start putting what God's doing in you in the chat. Yeah. And if it's, I'm 50% better or 100% better, whatever it is, just put it in the chat right now because your testimony prophesies for God to do it again. It's the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 19.10 is this spirit of prophecy which means what he's done once, he's willing and able to do again. So whether on Bethel TV or on YouTube right now, just put it in the chat what God's doing in your body. And Father, we thank you for complete work, complete healing, complete breakthrough. Father, we thank you for a continual work of momentum and of glory 
building in people's bodies of complete wellness and wholeness in Jesus' name. And I just wanna encourage you as you go out throughout the day, is just be aware and pay attention to his presence. And I have this overwhelming sense that there's just gonna be divine moments, divine moments of connection, of conversations, of opportunity to pray and to release breakthrough. But you are the person right now, someone put, I'm 100% better, come on Jesus, all feeling restored in my hands and feet. Come on God, yes Jesus, just go ahead and put it in the chat if you notice anything going on right now in Jesus' name. I, I also really feel, somebody asked for prayer for mental health. We also see Aaron, you're asking about your grandma in critical condition and Hazel um, asking for prayer for Kelly that uh, had a stroke and brain cancer. And we just agree with you right now and agree with your faith uh, for them to be made well in the name of Jesus. But I saw someone asking for mental health uh, prayer and I felt the Lord say, He's bringing His peace. Come on. And I saw almost the, um, Anyone that's on a medication for mental health issues, anxiety and depression specifically, I saw the Lord putting a blanket of peace and saying it's time for peace. Like it's time to step into peace, it's time for peace. And so if that's you and you're struggling with that, I thank you God that the blood of Jesus is more than enough. Yeah. And I speak over your mind and I say be at peace, be at peace be at peace in Jesus' name. Come on, Jenny Pitt My uh, put, my knees are better, thank you Jesus. We had Emmett, he said, been struggling with back pain and popped ribbed in my back, feel no more pain, hallelujah. Come on Jesus, that's amazing. Linda said he restored my back, thank you God. Shoulder and knee is restored 90%, God. We say, do it again more. Chemo said 60% better. Thank, Thank you, God. God. We're just reading Christy, here. Christy, we agree with you for your nephew and your niece, both having health problems, yes. kidney failure and kidney cancer. We say enough in Jesus' name. Kidneys yeah. be made new. Tailbone from a nine Thank to a three. Jesus. We just say yes, 100% God. right now. Over LC, suffered lupus and pain in my back, but now it's feeling much better. Come on, Stephanie, we uh, release grace Sa- right now. Sunny said, I can lift my jar of water with my left hand without pain in my elbow. Uh, I couldn't lift it before. So that's on uh, Bethel TV. Thank you, Jesus. We, <laughs> Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Come on. Celebrate it. So if you're seeing these uh, testimonies in the chat and you have that thing, I want you to just go, just repeat after me, just say, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. What you're doing in them, can I have it myself? And then just test out your body. And throughout the day, I want you to be paying attention to your body. Notice for any changes, pain doesn't just magically go away. And so if you're experiencing some level of breakthrough, whether it's 20% or 60%, what he start, he always finishes. And so Father, we release grace and healing over every single person on this call right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And if you're on here, we do have pastors on here that will be directing you of next steps of what you can do and receiving ministry. And people are saying shoulder pain gone, shoulder pain gone. There again. On Bethel TV that started uh, clearing up as well. Come on, Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you to stay here. Don't, Don't leave too quickly. Feast on what he's doing here. Feast on the testimony of Christ. And then watch him begin to do it more. Back pain is literally gone. Come on, Jesus. Come on, arms and shoulders, 100%. Thank Co, you. thank you, Holy Spirit. And just keep receiving, just like Steve said, that um, God is not a respecter of persons. And I just, I feel this thing of you're not gonna miss out. And I I know our time is supposed to be done, but I felt like the Lord's like, there's people that always feel like you miss out. Yeah. And I, I felt this, this almost this lie that I never win, I never get chosen, I never get seen when I put on the chat, whatever it was. I, almost this thing of feeling like I'm always overlooked. And I felt the Lord say, no. Yeah. Like my eyes are fixed on you. My eyes are fixed on you. So if, if that is you, I want you to stand up in faith right now saying, I'm seen, yeah. I'm chosen, on, I'm believed. Bruce. God is not a respecter of persons. And right now I break off the lie that you are overlooked and that you are insignificant and that you are too far from the hand of the Lord to reach. And so right now, God, I thank you for touching those ones. And I speak over you, you're significant, you're seen, you're valuable and you're an encounter waiting to happen. So God, I thank you for miracles over them in Jesus' name. And then last thing, and then we'll close. (laughs) But if you need a job, if you're believing for finances, if you're believing for a turnaround, you're believing for the glory of God just to invade any space where you're believing for breakthrough of momentum in that area, I just release it right now. I just release favor. I thank you for money just showing up, showing up in your bank account right now. I think many of you are believing even for provision to maybe even um, like invest in yourself. I felt like someone was contemplating, like I wanna invest in myself, whether it's a school of ministry or school or education. And you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. There's no finances. 
And I just feel like these next three weeks, there's gonna be an unprecedented amount of financial provision and breakthrough over you. And so Father, we just thank you for your provision over people's lives right now. And we ask that your glory be made manifest in every realm, uh, in every uh, sphere of influence in our life right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Yes. Guys, thank you so much for joining us, for being with us. We, we so value the fact that we get to have family all over the world and we get to be together in the Spirit. So thank you for joining us. We bless you as you go out this week and you go be the hands and feet of Jesus. We're thankful for you and we're excited to see you next week or on our Start Here course um, that's starting right now. So bless you guys and thanks for being with us. Bless you. Yeah.
Jesus. 